In this week's episode, we take a regular look at what's been in the news this week and we clarify the regulations with regards to wheelchairs and mobility scooters. Thank you to Jess Rayford, Tina Clark, Paul Weaver, and the rest of our crowdfunder supporters. We'll be announcing our Patreon campaign shortly, so hit that subscribe button and look out for further announcements in the future. King's College London is crowdfunding for an initiative that enables families to communicate with their loved ones who are in intensive care and with the NHS staff caring for them. Lifelines alleviates suffering during the pandemic by establishing a system to virtually visit isolated patients at their bedside. Donations to the appeal will help ensure a 4G-enabled device is delivered to an NHS intensive care unit within days. The campaign has raised over two-thirds of its target to date and aims to raise £1.5 million in total. You can add your support to the appeal by visiting justgiving.com slash campaign slash life dash lines. Apple and Google have teamed up to develop an API that contact traces and alerts users from an app made available to download via their iOS and Android app stores. Every day your device creates a key and IDs that are normally used to connect to others to share data. Consent can be given to share the keys and their health status, particularly if they test positive for coronavirus, which will then send an alert out to those who the device has been near to. So today's feature is all about mobility scooters, their history and their regulations today. Stefan Farfeller was a 17th century German watchmaker who was thought to have been either a paraplegic or an amputee. His invention of a manumotive carriage in 1655 is widely considered to be the first propelled wheelchair. As such, the chair was consistent with the later designs of self-propelled invalid carriages in turn believed to have been the precursor to the modern day bicycle and even tricycle. In 18th century England, the forerunner of the wheelchair was the bath chair. Invented by James Heath of Bath, he designed a bathtub shaped chair on wheels. It was propelled by a servant or could be drawn by a small pony or donkey. Hence they became known as invalid carriages. Between the wars, Stanley Engineering Company Limited of Egham, Surrey began making self-propelled invalid carriages under the Argson name in the 1920s. The Argson Runnymede was designed in South Africa and manufactured in England from 1936 to 1954. They were powered by either a battery or a Villiers petrol engine. The R.A. Harding Company of Bath was founded in 1921. Initially producing hand-propelled tricycles, Hardings introduced a variety of powered invalid carriages in 1926. The deluxe models A and B were powered by a 122cc Villier engine, whilst the Pulteney was powered by either a 200 or 300cc JA Prestwick engine. In December 1948, the deluxe models were upgraded with larger wheels, a new petrol tank, and fan-cooled Villiers 147cc engines. Hardings introduced a full-bodied version in 1956 called the Consort, but only 12 were made. The company closed down in 1988, having made motor drive models until 1966 and hand-powered ones until 1973. In Britain, in the 1960s and 70s, motorised invalid carriages were provided as a subsidised, low-cost vehicle to aid mobility of people with disabilities. Vehicles supplied by the National Health Service had three wheels and were very lightweight, and therefore their suitability on roads among other traffic were often considered dubious on safety grounds. Invalid carriages are banned on motorways. These have now been superseded by a range of electrically powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters, in addition to the mobility scheme that enables individuals in receipt of the mobility element of personal independence payments to opt in to receive a leased car, sometimes with necessary adaptations made to aid steering and speed control.
today there are three types of mobility vehicle recognized by the legislation. Class one, a manual wheelchair, self or attendant propelled and not electrically powered. Class two, a powered wheelchair or mobility scooter intended for footpath or pavement use with a maximum speed of four miles per hour. Class three, powered wheelchairs and mobility scooters for use on the road with a maximum speed of eight miles per hour, but with the facility to travel at four miles per hour on a footpath or pavement. All vehicles, class one, two, and three, can be used on footpaths, pavements, bridleways, and in pedestrian areas at a maximum speed of four miles per hour. Class one and two vehicles can be used on the road if a pavement is not available or to cross the road. It should be noted that other electrically powered vehicles such as golf buggies, although they may look similar to mobility vehicles, they are not invalid carriages within the meaning of the law, so may not be used on the public highway or pavement. So a popular question is whether the mobility vehicle has to be registered, and yes it does, if it is a class 3. So a class 3 mobility vehicle, new or used, must be registered with the driver and vehicle licensing agency, that's the DVLA. To register you must complete form V55-4 for new vehicles or V55-5 for used vehicles. The forms are available from the post office or via the DVLA online. You can't register your class 3 mobility scooter online or at the post office. You'll need to send the completed form to the DVLA in Swansea. You will need to include evidence of the vehicle's age if it's available and documents showing the keeper's name and address. So do you need to have mobility vehicle insurance? Well, like any vehicle you take on the road, you really should have insurance for it. It's strongly advised that you have mobility vehicle insurance, although it's not compulsory by law. The insurance you take out will cover your personal safety, other people's safety and the value of your vehicle. In some cases, your household insurance may provide cover, but you need to check this with your insurance provider. The next question I have is whether you can carry a passenger. Mobility vehicles designed to carry two people cannot be used on the pavement or road because they don't meet the definition of an invalid carriage in law. With regard to children, the law does not explicitly state that an adult carrying an infant in a sling or pouch is unlawful. However, it's not permitted to carry anyone else on a mobility vehicle, e.g. a child standing on the vehicle and so on. Is there an eyesight test? There's no legal eyesight requirements in relation to using a mobility vehicle, but it is important to have good eyesight and be able to judge distances, recognize hazards and so on. If the user of a mobility vehicle were involved in an accident and it was found that the driver had poor eyesight, it could be deemed to be a contributory factor. It is suggested that users should have a minimum visual acuity of 6 to 24. Now many of us are on medication for various chronic illnesses or in fact issues relating to our disability. But what about medication and your health in relation to your mobility vehicle? Well, if you take medication that makes you feel drowsy, you should consider whether it is safe to use a mobility vehicle and consult your doctor. You should not use your mobility vehicle if you've consumed alcohol, because if you're on the road, you're technically in charge of a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol. So what about traveling on public transport? Well, all three classes of mobility vehicle may be taken on buses and trains, providing the bus or train is constructed to carry a reference wheelchair and your wheelchair fits the dimensions. Buses are restricted to one wheelchair space. It is always advisable to contact rail operators ahead of your journey to make sure that suitable facilities are available. We'll do a separate video on the highway code and using mobility vehicles. Uh, we'll put a link to it in the show notes so that you can find it. If you want us to go into more detail about that in a future episode, then let us know. But meanwhile, that is kind of a brief overview of the legislation relating to mobility scooters and a little look back in history as well. If you have questions about your wheelchair, pavement scooter or mobility vehicle, get in touch with us via social media or drop us an email to hello at livingenabled.com. Well, that's it for another week. Don't forget to subscribe via your favourite podcatcher or on the YouTube channel where you'll find the video version of the podcast. And remember, Making the most of modern technology in everyday life is living enabled.